Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. An American court bars a father from teaching a six-year-old boy that he is a boy. California Democrats passed ballot harvesting laws to steal the elections, and French protesters force Macron to reverse his carbon tax. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. An American court in Texas has barred a father from teaching his own son, his six-year-old son, that he is a boy. Christian Headlines reports that a Texas court has barred the father from saying to his son, you're a boy, or even dressing him like a boy because his mother objects. His mother wants to call him a girl and dress him like a girl. Well, of course, the six-year-old boy is confused and even would rather hang around with his father than his mother, reportedly. But the boy, whose name is James, is now stuck in a custody case between father and mother, and the mother insists that the boy is actually a transgender girl because he feels like a girl inside. Are you serious? I mean, in my opinion, the mother ought to lose custody for abuse. This is confirmed by the Federalist newspaper and a gender transition therapist is involved and did diagnose the boy, James, with gender dysphoria. And somehow the boy's teachers at school now have been trained to treat him like a girl and call him by a different name, Luna, instead of James. He even uses the girl's bathroom. But when the child is around his father, he refuses to be acknowledged as a girl. He snaps back into sanity whenever he's around dad, the Federalist reports, and wants to be called James a boy. But not the mother. The mother wants to terminate the father's parental rights. The father reached out to a guest on our program, Walt Heyer, who is an expert and a former transgender woman who returned to sanity, became a Christian man because of Jesus. And Walt Heyer believes that the boy has been misdiagnosed. Heyer says, quote, James violently refuses to wear girls' clothes at my home. That's what the father says, violently refuses, throws away girls' clothes when he comes over to dad's house. It's possible Heyer says that James is a confused child who is caught in society's debate over gender. Heyer also wrote that it is possible for the mother and the therapist are pressing him to become something that he is not. The child at a young age said that he wanted to be a girl, but those feelings apparently were not consistent. And Heyer wrote, quite, writes, quote, uh, the criteria for diagnosis of gender dysphoria, childhood gender dysphoria, is that the child must be persistent, consistent, and insistent about being the opposite sex. Under the skilled eyes of the therapist, the child was presented two pieces of paper, one with the word James and one with the word Luna, and asked to pick the name that he preferred. When the appointment only included his mother, James selected Luna, the name and gender that he uses at his mother's home and in his first grade classroom. But when the appointment was only including the presence of his father, however, James pointed to the boy name, James, not the girl's name, end quote. Supporters of James who believe he wants to live as a boy, have launched a website. The website is savejames.com. I think there's a petition drive there. You can sign at savejames.com. The boy can begin receiving hormone treatments at age eight. Hormone treatments? To do what? 
to turn him into a girl. Higher, the analyst calls this chemical castration, if the mother gets her way. And that's the news. Our thanks to Walt Heyer for that report, also the Federalist, and also Christian Headlines for bringing that to my attention. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have a father and a mother engaged in a custody battle, and, and God hates divorce, and there must be so, so much pain involved in any custody battle where a child has to choose sides sometimes, and it's really up to the judge uh, when the child is that young, six years old, kid doesn't know what's right and wrong, kid doesn't know what, which, which way is up, is just trying to make sense of the world as it's presented to him, and here you have this left-wing activist, his mother, who's trying to change him into a girl. Those are just the human actors in the story. Where is the Spirit of God in this story? Where are the demonic spirits? Well, the little boy, is probably being confused by the lies perpetuated by the mother. I wouldn't even say uh, the boy is demonized, the boy is probably just confused by the demonized mother. Because she is listening to a spirit of lying and she is forcing that abuse upon a child who is you know, trying to just get along in kindergarten with making sense of whatever the world is around him. And let's say he does feel like a little girl inside. Does he even know what that means? How can a child know what it means to feel like other than what you are? The kid probably feels natural feelings, but because of the deception, he's being abused. And we discern upon the father, the spirit of God to rescue that child from the oppressor. Thank God for you and your fight, sir. The Bible says in Mark chapter nine, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for her in this case, the mother, if a millstone or hung around her, her neck and she'd be thrown in the sea than to abuse her own child. Stop the child abuse. Those are Jesus' words, not mine. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray for liberty and freedom to come to this child, James. Bless him with sanity and protect him from the liars. God give power to the court to do the right thing and rescue the child in wisdom and sanity. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, California has passed a law for har ballot harvesting. How did that help them win the election? This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I wanna tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of our ability to have a healthy marriage, but with the way God intended it, he always wanted us to see his view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866 Obey God. Again, that's 866 O B E Y G O D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You too can have a godly marriage. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. 
Our next story comes from Need to Know News. It reports that California Democrats passed a law a couple years ago, something called ballot harvesting law, which now helped them steal the elections in 2018. Need to Know News reports that very few people took notice when the far left Governor Jerry Brown signed into law the changes in a bill called AB 1921. He did that two years ago in 2016, and as a result, California has now, this year, lost seven of its 14 Republican House seats in the United States Congress. This election cycle, Republicans are out, Democrats have taken advantage of this ballot harvesting law. Well, that kind of law, that kind of practice is illegal in most states. For example, Texas, even New York and Pennsylvania, they arrest people for so-called ballot harvesting. Orange County, traditionally conservative enclave in Southern California, Ronald Reagan's former Republican bastion, turned all blue this year as Democrats found hundreds of thousands of votes after election day that were collected by labor unions who said they went door to door picking up these votes, but really, maybe they just had them in a stack in a warehouse somewhere. Republicans objected, some including Mimi Walters, Dana Rohrbacher and Kim Young were all ahead on election night. They were winning their seats to go back to Congress only to lose their races after late ballots were discovered and counted against them. The amount of mail-in ballots counted in Orange County was unprecedented. A whopping quarter million ballots were produced in Orange County as a result of the new ballot harvesting law. The San Francisco Chronicle reported Fred Whitaker, chairman of the County Republican Party, said in a note to supporters in Orange County alone, where every house seat went Democrat for the first time in history. He said, quote, number of election day vote by mail drop-offs was unprecedented over a quarter million. This is a direct result of ballot harvesting allowed under California law for the first time ever that directly caused the switch from being ahead on election night to losing two weeks later, end quote. Well, the voting system in California is so bad that a Democrat in California's 21st district was down by 6.4% on election night, ended up winning three weeks later. How do you make up 6% after election night? How do you do that? Democrats don't even try to hide their blatant voter fraud anymore. This according to the source we're quoting, and they just pass laws to make election fixing legal and the Republican party just sits back and allows this. This is confirmed also by Daily Caller who reports the stunning turnaround in California of all states can be attributed to several factors as conservative critics like the Federalist Brie Payton wrote, but the most significant of those seems to be the practice of ballot harvesting passed as a barely noticed change in the state's vote by mail procedures in 2016, signed by then Governor Jerry Brown. That California law, AB 1921, allows voters to give to any third party. Now here's what ballot harvesting is. You've been wondering, what is this? It allows voters to give any third party, not just a relative or someone living in your, in your household, but now you can give to anybody the power to collect and turn in your ballot or even fill it out on your behalf and turn in your completed ballot. So it's called ballot harvesting and critics say the practice is ripe for fraud. Consider for example, the case of Lulu who was recorded trying to harvest what she thought was a Democrat voters ballot in Representative Knight's district. One precinct in Orange County, 38083, that's the precinct number, ironically had 120% turnout. How do you get more than 100% turnout in, in the election? Well, only 465 people were registered to vote, but that precinct turned in 561 ballots clearly evidence of voter fraud. And that's the news, our thanks to 
uh, the Federalist and also um, the Daily Caller and also Need to Know News who brought this to our attention. Uh, let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In America, our laws require open and honest elections. Transparency, you know, the, the method of collecting the votes, however, when it was changed by Governor Jerry Brown and the liberals in California, they did it with the express intent, I believe, to engage in voter fraud. And when they allow the labor unions, God bless them, they're, they're motivated people, but they are a machine and they will, engage their employees literally to go from door to door collecting people's ballots and then holding them in a truck somewhere, who knows if they're actually the, the ballots that people voted on or were they replaced or were they only collected from Democrat households or were they, you know, anyway, when you, when you have a quarter million votes show up the day after the election, they were sitting in some warehouse somewhere there's no way to verify if they actually belong to the intent of the voters who cast those ballots. That's why voter harvesting is illegal in states like New York and Texas and other places, Pennsylvania. Uh, we need to pray against fraud in our elections. Would you join me? The Bible says this in Proverbs 12, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name against the lying lips of anyone who would steal and defraud an election. Father, with a quarter million votes, making up up to 6% of the electorate after, after the election night is already closed, then they come in with all these paper ballots. Father, we pray for an end to the deceit, the deception and the theft, the demonic spirit of theft of power from the people who would have voted honestly had they not been defrauded. Father, we pray in Jesus' name for an end to the deception and a restoration of true transparency and protection for the voters in California in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take one last short break. When we come back, the French president is under fire after his carbon tax. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also faced punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon. And you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg 
It's time to take back your country. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today comes from Euronews who reports that French protesters have forced French President Macron to reverse his carbon taxes. Euronews that reports that President Macron is now temporarily suspending his carbon taxes on gasoline after angry protests because he had more than doubled the price of gasoline up to $7 per gallon and the people just couldn't afford gas anymore. So they took to the streets, many of them violent, actually throwing containers of gasoline that burst into flames toward the police. You've seen this all over the news recently. But now Macron is reversing course and announcing his decision, Prime Minister Edouard Philippe said anyone would have to be deaf or blind not to see or hear the roiling anger on the streets over Macron's policy that he defended as critical to combating climate change. Prime Minister Felipe said, quote, the French, essentially senior citizens who have donned yellow vests, wanted to, the taxes to drop and, they, and work to pay. They also want what we want. If I didn't manage to explain it, if the ruling majority didn't manage to convince the French, then something must change. No tax is worth jeopardizing the unity of the nation, end quote. Along with the delay to the tax increases that were set for January, Felipe said that more time would be used to discuss other measures to help the working poor and squeeze the middle class who rely on cars and vehicles to go to work and to go shopping. It's the middle class that they're going after, you know, uh, and underneath the seat of every middle class driver who has a car, there's a yellow vest and the protesters now have worn these yellow vests and gone right up to the police, senior citizens, gone right up to the police and said, stop the tax. And the police lay down their arms, they're harmless, they're, they're helpless against these defiant senior citizens who are peaceful protesters. Earlier officials had hinted at a possible increase to the minimum wage, but that's not gonna help these senior citizens who have cars. Felipe, by the way, didn't even make a commitment to increasing the minimum wage. Instead, he warned citizens that they could not expect better public services and lower taxes. You gotta have higher taxes, he said. Quote, if the events of recent days have shown us one thing is that the French want neither an increase in taxes nor new taxes. If the tax take fails, then spending must fall because we don't want to pass our debts onto our children. The debts are already quite sizable, end quote. The so-called Yellow Vest Movement, which started November 17th in social media protest, named for the high visibility jackets that all motorists in France must carry in their cars, began the aim of highlighting the squeeze on household spending brought about by Macron's taxes on fuel. You know, to save the world from global warming, there's another deception. However, over the last three weeks, the movement evolved into a wider broad brush anti-Macron uprising, with many criticizing the president for pursuing policies they say favor the rich and do nothing to help the poor. Despite having uh, unclear goals, the movement has drawn people of all ages and backgrounds and tapped into the growing malaise over Macron's direction that he's trying to take the country. In fact, in the last two days, ambulance drivers and students have joined in and launched their own protesters. After three weeks of rising frustration, there was scant indication Felipe's measures would placate the yellow vests who themselves are struggling to find a unified position. And that's the news, or thanks to Euro News. You know, this whole global warming thing, granted, the temperature's going up, but that's happened naturally throughout human history for the past thousands of years. Not just because of gasoline. There's no reason to punish poor people by doubling their energy costs. The Bible says this in Proverbs 28, when the wicked arise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. Let's take a short break, and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. 
how can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or from angels or from invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. Maybe you know that I wrote my PhD dissertation entitled How to See the Holy Spirit and Angels and Demons. And it's all about this important topic of receiving the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life, which is why we've created now not just a book, but a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? When you learn to discern, it will transform your life and your ministry. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and get this important video resource. Or call us toll free at 866 Obey God, and for a suggested donation of $99, we'll give you the entire 17 part Bible study series for just $99. And if you order today, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us toll free at 866 Obey God. Get this important Bible study series for your family. Call today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you, thank you for watching. God bless you in Jesus' name. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. If you need prayer, call us. The Bible says in Proverbs 21, the fool covets greedily all day long, but the righteous gives and does not spare. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.